Next, we get one of the strangest stories in the Old Testament. The story of the Witch of Endor. The Philistines are amassing for their big attack against Saul. The attack that they just kicked David out of. And Saul is terrified. Saul asks for direction from the Lord. But God isn't answering him. Not by dreams or signs or priests or prophets. Not at all. Why do you think that is? Let's look at it this way. God is incredibly merciful. Does God accept deathbed confessions? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So why is he not communicating with Saul? A lot of times we get to use the details to kind of read into the state of people's hearts here. And I think what we're reading about Saul is Saul, all these years, has had his mind set on doing what he wanted to do. For years and years, he asked Samuel, what does God want me to do? And Samuel would tell him, and Saul would go and do something different. And so now, God stopped heaping coals on his head, shall we say. God had stopped telling him. Because even if he told Saul, Saul wouldn't do it. And Saul, in his insecurity, gets truly desperate. And he thinks, Samuel. Samuel always knew the right thing to do. I need to ask Samuel. Now, Samuel had died a few years back. He mentions it in the text right before David marries Abigail. So, Saul orders his servants to find a medium who can summon up Samuel from the dead. <laughs> you know this is not going to end well. Saul and two men go to visit the medium by night. The medium, not recognizing him, says, King Saul has cut off all the mediums from the land. You know, what are you asking of me? Are you trying to get me killed? But Saul swears by the name of the Lord that she will face no punishment. And he waves a bag of gold in front of her, presumably, and she says, <laughs> who would you like me to summon up? Samuel. And the medium sees Samuel rise up from the ground. At this point, the medium is given to understand who her client is. She screams, you have deceived me. You are Saul. Saul replies, don't be afraid. What do you see? She says, I see a god rising up from the ground, an old man wrapped in a robe. Saul senses him too. His hair stands on end. He bows low to the ground. And Samuel says to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul says, I am in great distress. The Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and does not answer me. Samuel replies, if the Lord has turned away from you, why are you asking me? <laughs> the Lord has done to you exactly as he promised. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, he has taken the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. And tomorrow, the Lord will give Israel into the hand of the Philistines, and you and your sons will be with me. See you tomorrow. <laughs> and Saul collapses to the ground. All his strength is gone. When people read this passage, they often want to know, what's really happening here? Is the medium a con artist? Is she imagining this? Or is the ghost of Samuel actually rising up from the ground? There's every reason to think that this is a real medium and that this is the actual spirit of Samuel speaking. It sounds just like him, for one. But God allows this to happen. The occult is real. And when people dabble in it, they risk dabbling in demons. People in this situation need to renounce evil and turn back to God. I've seen this firsthand. Years ago in RCIA, I mentored a woman who had worked as a professional psychic and medium for decades. I got to hear her story, talk with her, pray with her through every step of her recovery. One day, after a brief minor exorcism was prayed over her, her eyes got wide and she said, I'm not supposed to give psychic readings anymore. And I said, that's right. I need to throw away all my crystals and tarot cards and everything. That's right. Then she went home 
and she threw up over and over again for a solid week. No fever, no other symptoms, just vomiting. It was like her body was physically expressing that it was expelling the demons. That was a turning point for her. She had other turning points, but now she's a faithful Catholic who still has a lot of visions, but now it's visions of Jesus encouraging her and angels protecting her. She says she's happier now than she's ever been. People who are drawn to the occult need to realize that demonic spiritual experiences sound exciting, but they make you feel like you're run over by a truck, and they make you crave power so you want to do it more and more. It sucks the life out of you. It's a counterfeit for true spiritual experience, the kind that comes from God. Encountering God's presence in prayer gives us life, joy, peace. God infuses goodness into our hearts. God gives us the Holy Spirit. God recreates us in his image. He's water for our thirsty souls. Something the devil can never fake. It's just, I think it's something that's more common today than it has been in a long time. And it's something that is too little preached on. Those things absolutely happen. And good, these when they are good, they are spiritual <laughs> gifts that come from God. Just like God gave Samuel the prophet to foretell the future. God can and does give people premonitions, nudges, ideas that, oh, I need to do this. Ideas that something is not right with my friend. I better call them. Stuff like that happens all the time. Things like that, they're from God. They're spiritual gifts. Once early in my Catholic conversion, I had a dream about a Dominican nun, a small woman with beautiful light just shone from her. And I, in the dream, I poured out my heart to her. I'm thinking about converting to the Catholic Church, but what's it going to do to my family? And after I told my story, I listened to what she had to say, and she said, have you ever considered developing your psychic powers? <laughs> Even in the dream, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> The devil wasn't very subtle that time around. It's not the most obvious it's been. All right, let's keep going. The next day, King Saul watches as Jonathan and two of his other sons are killed in battle. Our sins affect the people we love. If Saul had followed God, Jonathan would have made a great king. Instead, Jonathan dies young. But God still gives him one of the best supporting actor roles of anyone in scripture. And after Saul watches his sons die, he is wounded himself, and he runs himself through with his own sword. Two days after David and his followers returned to Ziklag, after rescuing the kidnapped women and children, a messenger arrives to tell them that Saul is dead. The Amalekite messenger brings Saul's crown and armlet and presents them to David. And he brags to David about how he personally killed Saul. He's completely making this up. He looted Saul's body and is fully expecting a reward from David for doing away with his enemy. Instead, David is appalled. You were not afraid to raise your hand against the Lord's anointed? And David orders the Amalekite put to death. This is real grief. This isn't a show. Saul was God's anointed one. He was also like a father to David, a terrible father who came to a tragic end. And Jonathan was like a part of David's own soul. So David takes time to grieve. He writes a song to commemorate them and orders that it be taught throughout all of Judah. Then, after he takes time to grieve, David asks God, what now? Shall I go up? In other words, do I take the throne? God replies, yes. Where do I go, David asks? To Hebron. Hebron was the largest city in Judah, in David's tribe. And there in Hebron, the leaders of Judah, the tribe of Judah alone, 
anoint David king. I'd like to pause here and point out that fairly often in the story, David asks God for advice. Can you think of some other times David asked God for advice? Shall we go liberate the city of Kyla from the Philistines? Shall we, shall we go rescue the wives and children? Can we, can we find them? And there's more times going forward in the story when David is going to ask God what happens next. And God answers him. Last week, some people were wondering whether David, David gets that kind of guidance because he plays a special role in salvation history. And it's true, David plays an absolutely unique role in salvation history. But is that why God gives him that kind of guidance? The answer is no. Solomon tells us, in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. He's not writing to David or about David, he's writing to all of us. Isaiah tells us, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And Jesus tells us, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. What are ways that we can hear God's guidance? We've already heard uh, the example of King Saul about how not to inquire of the Lord. How do we inquire of the Lord? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. A plus answer. Pray. 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 Go to church. Go to church. God speaks at Mass. God speaks through the readings. God speaks through the homeless. God speaks everywhere. Listen. Listen. Do the yes. Invest in your life. Do personal devotions. Yeah. Set aside a good prayer time <coughs> for just listening to God or hearing from His Word. Is it a psalm or whatever that says seek the counsel of every wise person or something to that effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The people around us. I'm act I actually was going to get to that as a point later on. That uh, who are the people we listen to that are the voice of God in our lives? The lives of the saints is absolutely a way God speaks to us. I know for me that's especially a way. I find when I read the life of a saint, I start to notice the patterns of my life. Of... Uh, how my how, what this saint has to teach me about my life right now there's always patterns oh yeah i have written here how can we hear god's guidance the bible daily mass other devotional books personal prayer including all kinds of heart nudges coincidences and experiences priests and prophets people who are the voice of god in your life a righteous family member or friend or ordained minister and for me, it's very often my husband. God really does lead us to other righteous people. So have all these ways that you can hear from God and cultivate the ones that especially work for you.